Hey YouTube, welcome back. Have you ever wondered how Google Maps help you find the shortest route, predicts your ETA, or even avoids traffic jams? It's all thanks to a fascinating system design that handles billions of users and countless routes around the globe. Today we are diving deep into the architecture and components that make Google Maps work seamlessly. And in this video, we will just try to discuss a high-level design of um, uh, the Google system. And we will create like a video series that talks about each topic of the Google Maps system because it's a pretty important system to understand and there's a lot of topics that we need to discover. So it's not suitable and it's not, um, yeah, it's not suitable to put all of them in one video. The video will be too long and it will also will be quite tough for me to add all of this information in one video so in today's video we're trying to uh, focus on the high level design and the core components of that system so um, before we start in the core components we need to look at our functional requirements and non-functional requirements so we basically know what we are designing and our functional requirements it's a pretty simple we, we need to identify the user's location we need to recommend the fastest route based on distance and traffic. We need to provide a clear turn by turn directions. And the non-functional requirements, uh, scalability, we need to handle billions of queries across all the countries. We need availability because we need to ensure the service is always up. A low latency, we need to deliver results in under two to, uh, to three seconds. Accuracy, the ETA prediction should be close to reality. So this is the functional requirements and non-functional requirements. And I guess we can um, we can start in our uh, system. So uh, in our system, first we start with our user as always. We have our user. And the user will send requests to a load balancer and the load balancer will distribute all the incoming requests across our web servers. Okay, so we have three main services. First, we will have like a location finder. Location finder. The location finder is responsible for um, pinpointing the user's current location or the user's current position on the map using a GPS or Wi-Fi and the, um, the, the, the color networks on the, uh, on the mobile. It continuously updates the user's location in real time and provides an accurate starting point for navigation. The key features of this service is determines the latitude and the longitude coordinates, displays the user's position on the map interface. Three, it provides seamless integration with the route and navigation service. Okay, and next, the second service that we will talk about. Mm. The second service, it will be the route finder okay um, this service identifies and calculates the optimal path between two locations based on various factors like distance time and current traffic coordinate uh, conditions or uh, conditions sorry conditions uh, the key features of the service, it process, uh, processes source and destination coordinates to generate a route. It supports multiple uh, transportation modes like walking, driving, cycling, etc. It integrates with live traffic data for accurate travel time estimation. And the next service we will have, which will be the navigator. Navigator. Okay. Um, 
and the navigator also will have a connection with the find with the route finder so the navigator ensures that users follow the suggested route and provide updates guidance in real time if the user um, um, debates uh, like its key features it tracks the user journey and provides turn by turn instructions it detects route um, um, divisions and it triggers um, recalculations it also notifies users of changes in in the optimal route due to traffic or other events um, the second thing we need to talk about which is the um, um, the GPS or Wi-Fi uh, technologies like these technologies enable the system to triangle uh, to like um, to triangulate the user's uh, ground position like the GPS provide which is a global po a positioning system uh, provides a high accuracy location tracking outdoors the Wi-Fi utilized for better indoor location accuracy and uh, um, the cellular or cellular uh, cellular networks provides a fallback pos um, uh, positioning uh, when GPS is unavailable. Uh, this is the important thing that we need to talk about. Um, and we did. So yeah. Um, next, I guess we need to talk about the um, services. The next services that we will so we will work on. But let me just try to improve things here. I guess I need to add like a big one like that. And I guess it would be a good idea to wrap all of them here because these services will uh, will communicate with a lot of different things. Um, also the route so and yeah and also the route finder will be con will send thing uh, like um yeah okay next we have the uh, a service we call um um a um distributed search system or um um yeah, we have a system that we call a distributed search system. We will talk about that. We need to talk about this one. I guess I don't need to type all of it. Let's just uh, try to type it. Yeah. So this system uh, converts textual place names into geographic coordinates like latitude and longitude. It handles user queries like uh, New York City and matches them to exact map locations. Uh, key features of this one, it maintains an um, index of place names and their uh, corresponding coordinates. It, uh, it has also it optimized for high speed search and retriever across larger um, large data sets. It ensures that entered keywords are accurately mapped to specific locations on that map. And this service will have like um, a bi-directional Can I make it like um, a bi-directional thing? Uh, I don't know We'll have a connection with an area Area search service this service acts as an intermediary between the distributed search and the uh, graph processing services and we will talk about these services in a bit. It limits the scope of processing by, by focusing only on the relevant geographical area between the source and the destinations. Uh, the key features of it, it identifies the region that spans the source and destination it sends this subgraph to the graph processing service for shortest path calculations. It also reduces uh, computational overhead by narrowing the search space. And also all of them will have a connection with the search area. Um, the second thing we have to talk about, which is the um, 
um, the graph system and the database, the graph database. But let's first talk about the graph processing service. So the service perform the computational heavy lifting for finding the shortest path between two points. It uses algorithms like um, um, the Jextra for A to process road and network graphs. Um, oper it operates uh, on smaller subgraphs defined by the the area search service. Also, it's evaluates it evaluates multiple paths to determine the fastest or shortest route. Also, it considers additional weight like traffic, road conditions, and um, time of day. The next, we have our um, graph database. And also, so the database stores the road network on the form of graph where nodes represents the intersections or points of interests, edges represents roads with associated weight like distance, travel time, or traffic. The key features of this uh, database its efficiency, the efficiency efficiently it efficiently stores and retrieves road network data. It also supports uh, partitioning and charting for larger scale scalability. Um, it also updates dynamically with live traffic data and new um, routes. The next thing we have our um, a pop up system. Talk about why we have this one. Um, do we have like a oh let's add this one as our pop up here. A pop up system. And the pop up system will have connection with uh, no no no. Also, it will have a connection with this. Also, it will have a connection with a service we call uh, Graph Building. We will talk about this one in a bit. And the Graph Building should have a connection with this one. Okay, so let's talk about the pop up system. Um, this system enables real-time communication between various services. Uh, we can use Kafka instead. Um, it's responsible for calculating, processing, and broadcasting live data updates such as user uh, devastations or traffic changes. Um, the key features of the system, it publishes live user locations updates to subscribes, uh, the, to subscribes like um, the area search service, for example. It collects and processes streams of location data from users for traffic pattern analysis. It also enhances system scalability and decouples produ producers like location updates from consumers like um, grab processing, something like that. And next we have like, um, can, can I make uh, the, this one? Yeah. We have, um, um, A graph, a graph, uh, a third party road collection. Let's make this one like wider. Yeah. Okay. 
So this service gathers raw road network data from various external uh, sources like uh, government agencies, satellite providers, and user feedbacks. Um, it uh, pre-processes collected um, uh, data into a standardized format. It incorporates data about new roads like road closures and um, also updates to extend, um, existing routes. It feeds this data into the graph building service for integration with the graph database. I guess I forgot to talk about the graph building service. Uh, the graph building like this service processes the raw road network data collected from the third party sources and contracts the road network graph. It converts road network data into uh, a graph structured uh, com um, com um, compatible with graph database. It updates existing graphs with new data or uh, modifications. It handles uh, increment updates to ensure the graph remain accurate, up to date. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Um, I guess I did talk about everything. I don't know if I did talk about uh, uh, the loop balancer. The loop balancer ensures that incoming user requests are evenly distributed across available servers, avoiding overload, overload and ensuring high availability. Um, and yeah, this is the whole system. And I would say this system is not easy. It's really complicated. It's not, um, it's not friendly for user for uh, for beginners. So because of that, I will break down this system into multiple videos to make it, it as easy as possible for you guys to understand. Um, so for this video, we just talked about high level uh, design on the system. And we talked about the, the core important components. And in the next videos, we will try to deep dive in each component. And maybe we try to focus on, um, on some considerations and stuff like that. So that's it for this video and see you guys in the future.